evening and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Taylor Neil Zaza, friend of the show. How are you, man? How are you? Good. It's it's good to be back. I feel like like I'm a regular on the couch, so to speak. You, you know, you are. I'm gonna have to have you come on. You have to co-host a couple of shows. We'll have to find a couple uh, people you want to jump on with. We'll do some. I've been pretty busy yourself. Yeah, we haven't focused on your last album. I you probably work on more music. I'm sure you had your Halloween special. Yeah, one, one dark night was one dark night was incredible this year. Um, you know, we start. We I'll just I'll start with that. So yeah. we uh, I started in eighteen. Uh, we uh, did the show the first year in eighteen, and ever since then we I think we skipped one year because of COVID. It's been growing and growing and growing. So this year, it, it was like an exponential growth spurt with uh, like the uh, the 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 stage that the production was was enormous this year. We had a uh, two two levels stairs and of course being a, a a vintage kiss fan i'm like man that's like out of kiss alive too man i got i got two staircases and a and a thing and we had the, the big screen and it it was really really uh it was an amazing thing and i think it was what we'll need to to launch this thing to do a national tour next october so um it, it, it was a great run and uh It'll it'll be even bigger this year. So yeah, I definitely think. I mean, if, if anybody kind of like knocked the door down a little bit to give the, the, the show, show like just can do well touring, especially like the seasonal, was the Siberian orchestra there with the rock metal thing. They've yeah. shown unequivocally there is an audience that is there, you know. And it's crazy because, um, you know, Christmas is the the a number one holiday, but. Halloween people, people viscerally, if I can use that word, feel Halloween like, and, and I'm sure you, you see it where you are. Everyone decorates their yards now. They they want to dress up. They like it's really coming up as like the big holiday. And so the, the the challenge that I've felt for this is all right. So as far as as Christmas goes, we we know what the songbook is of Christmas, right? All the right. Christmas carols, and we know what the but. The, the song book of Halloween, what, what's that soundtrack sound like? Is it is it gothic classical music? Is it uh, certain rock pieces? Is it, so that's sort of what we have been exploring. And so this year we did a lot more mashups. We did a lot more um, uh, like heavy rock tunes. And it was, we're really defining it as we go. And uh, it was, it was a, great success so i'm finally I'm now i'm finally decompressed up from it and it's been like a, what a month it took yeah. me that long to, to, to d dark night and now i'm ready to talk about that or whatever right. i mean it was yeah it was a, a tornado but uh yeah so would you actually i mean the idea of you touring it with is great i mean for touring for halloween you can probably do as long as you want but there's a smaller window if you're focusing in the halloween time frame but people will come anytime really I mean, it's a production. If you can just do it as one dark night and then they then do the Halloween special version of it in that time of year, you could probably do it whenever you want, really, because that audience is already built in. You know what I mean? Well, you, know, you bring up a really great point because it was actually designed from the beginning um, not to be an exclusive Halloween show. So it uh, there is a story that goes, there's a story arc that goes where uh, it goes through the show that... Um, you know, we, we love and embrace, uh, monsters, you know, like Frankenstein or Dracula or whatever. Yeah. But if we're really analyzing things, maybe the real monster is within us. The real oh, monster really is in the mirror, you know? So the show does have a story arc where it starts, you know, we open with Danny Elfman's, uh, this is Halloween all rocked up and, you know, we take it, but mid show it, it turns where it's, it talks about you know we 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 bring in helter skelter with Charles Manson, we we bring in the dark side of things that that uh, man has done. So by the end of the show, you realize yeah they, these monsters are cool. They're like but they're projections of maybe what's inside of us. So that's why we relate to them so well. So to your point, it's always been about I guess we're we're grabbing the low hanging fruit so to speak of Halloween monsters. Okay, but this with the story arc as it is, it certainly could play 
year round. And, and uh, we've certainly been thinking about how to make that work year round because the show's so good. It's, it's, it's a shame to, to get it all ready for October and then it's over. And I think it, it actually does the show a disservice by yeah. saying it's, it's a Halloween show. So yeah, you're Sean, you're right on. You need oh, to manage it. Sure. Yeah, please. I, I think, no, I mean, obviously it's obvious. You, I'm sure you guys have said it a million times there. I mean, you could evolve, you can make it a little special. You could tweak it though for the holidays. You can do Halloween, do a little special, a little tweak to it there and tweak it a little bit for, make it more of a, a nightmare before Christmas type of thing, like around Christmas time and kind of keep changing it up a little bit, but still keep that same macabre feeling to it. I think people would love that. People like a production. People like guitars. People like excitement. They want to go. I think after COVID, everyone's really warmed up, you know, to, to go out. See, to, yeah, but to see a performance, a whole night to go out. Exciting. To, to do and, that's, and that's the thing is we really, as, as the promoters of, of putting the show on, that's why every year production gets better and better. And this year was an exponential jump. So we brought in Alice Cooper's lighting director and set designer to do to do all that uh, that set work and all the lighting design and everything. Um, I mean, it was it was expensive to do, and but it looked like what you would expect from a right. international production. Like it was like. I, in fact, it's funny. I was I was looking at some of the videos that we're editing through. the uh, The guys are wearing sunglasses on stage because it was so migraine inducing bright on stage. Like it, like even like we did a dress rehearsal, and I was like, "Man, my head hurts. It's killing me." Because the, the stage was so bright and flashing, and it was it was lighting chaos because it was it was so <laughs> crazy. So yeah. But well, and then also, is. but it also brings the other thing we talked with joke about is being a, just a guitar show you've done. It's usually ninety five percent male. Those are just real numbers. This isn't me just saying stuff to be like male, female. It's just that's just how. Oh, yeah, and 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 of standing like this. And that, that was exactly right. So so Whatever. with that being said, it sucks. This this production adds a lot more um, different entertainment besides just a guitar playing for everybody. So it makes it more abundant. You know, for things to kind of jump in and people to enjoy. So you know, I think it opens up your audience. And, and you bring up a, a great point. What that is, you know, I, with all the different promoters that we we deal with with the show, I always say like, it's not about me. It's not about shredding guitar. It's the guitar is in it, but it's about the, the production, the show itself, the, the music. Um, you know, I, I think. You know, to to use an example that I'm all, it's always compared to, like Trans Siberian, yeah, Joel or Al Petrelli or or Chris, they they play, but right. the show's not about them. It's not about their guitar playing. It's not about uh, they're they're playing A minor arpeggio. It, it's about the production, and they happen to augment that production with great guitar playing, and, and mm-hmm. that's sort of what it is. So when they say, "Oh, come see uh, Neil Zaz," no, no, it's not about me it's about the show and i want to really actually as strange as it sounds i want to take myself out of the production and i want the production stand on its own it's about my guitar playing it's it's about what we're trying to get across with this show so well i mean that that goes hand in hand with your guitar playing as you get older you're not so much about shredding you're kind of like you know i mean you're not running into the crowds now you're kind of strutting into it because you're you know who you are now you know you just write your music to music, whether it's a few notes, it's a lot of notes. It's about the song. I think yeah. songwriters tend to do that as they get older. They're like, I've already done that. And I love it. It's great. But I want to do something different now and take even a harder challenge. And, you know, is, is that old age? Is that an old age talking? Like, cause that's what I think. Like, I'm like, I think that's I what it is. Like a million and one notes. It, it like, I it's, 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 on, it's, you know, I want to do something else. Yeah. I mean, and, but it's harder. I mean, what is the hardest thing in the world to do? write a perfect pop song with a few words that are perfectly easy that everybody knows. It sounds easy. It's so hard. I mean, first off, the Beatles wrote almost every easy pop song. There are no songs left. No, no but, but, like, but it's like, seriously, it's like, there are, it's to write a, such a simple song like that with a few chords, it's hard. Absolutely. And that's, uh, I was speaking with someone the other day about like Van Halen, you know, he wasn't an instrumental guitar player. He played within the context of the band, right? Yeah. But they wrote some amazing songs and some catchy riffs. And 
like he he was to me the biggest guitar hero because it wasn't just about the guitar it was about the experience of seeing van halen and and roth and the tunes and yeah he he did things that were never ever done before but it was packaged a certain way you know where oh yeah it's not just about playing an a minor arpeggio or you know it's van halen really showed us the way to do this you know he played such an odd way too a lot of people couldn't figure it out and now just now there's a few players that are coming out that finally figured it out out like spot on to what the heck he was doing because he always played things even his timing was weird or his tuning was different or wouldn't be precisely perfect but he hit these notes that were not supposed to sound good at the right time the right you know i mean and that's what it's kind of about what are you going to do that you can feel that it's getting your creativity and your, and your your what's your you know your goal and what is the end goal for you you know a, a good song you know it, it's always it's always about a good song because listen if, if you're going down the uh the alley of i, I want to be the fastest or i want to do, do this uh, pyrotechnic stuff or whatever like that's cool but you're going to see it once or twice and there's no emotional attachment to it you're like Man, that's cool. That's a that's a freak show. That's a circus sideshow. That that's killer. Yeah. I love it. Okay, let's put something on I want to listen to. That's cool. You know. Yeah, so that's all I, get. I, I really, I, I really, uh, as as I do get older, I I understand. You know the stuff like I grew up listening to. So even so, like I know we've talked about this before, but you know Van Halen, of course, uh, Neil Sean, amazing player. He was tempered within the context of what that band did and it works so well. So you're getting this great melodic playing this, that, that, that was touching me, but it was, it was about the song or even, I know we were talking beforehand, uh, Michael Schenker, right? UFO oh, yeah. songs. Those are songs with amazing playing in them. It, it's, it's not the playing itself. There's, there's something up. So sometimes we all miss the boat. It's not about the playing. It's about the vehicle that the playing sits on that, that moves it forward. So I, I just agree with you on that. I mean, that, but, that, but that's the thing I've noticed that as the players get on in their catalogs, they want to change it up. So it's not the same anymore, you know, different gunslingers now, you know, it's just, where are you going to go with it? I, and I think and, 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 and to your, your show though, it's really crazy is even trying to go on YouTube to grab a couple of clips of it to see it. Cause obviously I don't, the only one, only one city got to see it. There really right. isn't much out, out there. It's really, you know, it's not much out there to even get a preview of what your show is like. So you say you're editing. Is this finally something going to come out so the rest of the world can see your top secret show? Yeah, <laughs> the top, we don't want to keep it top secret, uh, you know. Um, yeah, uh, we we had a, a six camera shoot. Now that I, I took a look at it, uh, so, some of the footage we can use, some is... Um, some some crazy camera work that I, I I don't think anyone wants to watch. So yeah, we'll definitely we'll we're gonna start early this year getting the word out and and releasing clips of what happened last year. And we got some great promo and some great uh, photos and some some great stuff. So yeah, listen, we don't want it to be a secret. We want it to be we want everyone to know about it and understand what it is. So. Probably enough to put a couple of good songs together or switch it around, some good good editing. You could, I'm sure you could get some good stuff out of there because it's not just yeah, a guitar show. If, because it's content, if, you can move it around to other stuff. Yeah. Even if we did, like, I know we're doing a, like, right now we're working on a, we call it a sizzle reel where it's just some of the, the highlights of yeah. the show with some of the back. Um, that that will, will really tell the story as well. So, um, but of course, so that was uh, October. So November, uh, two weeks at one week after I'm already changing everything. Not, not everything, but like, I, I'm real uh, picky when it comes to, you know, like th this show was great. It could be better. So what, what could be better? So I already started uh, working on sketches of what we're going to do different next year in terms of music, adding a few things, taking some stuff away because you have to grow, right? You, it has to progress, it has to go somewhere. It started here it's here, but we're going to go here. So um, th that's what I love about the artistic side of things, which is you just, you, you keep, you keep tweaking it. You know, you, you try something, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And then, uh, you know, you just fix it. So, you know. 
I'm excited. Are you doing anything now with your, because you also do, you have you, uh, the Halloween, really, Dark Knight, which isn't, as we talk about, it really isn't Halloween anymore. It's it's not Halloween, like, I don't know, Bruce Willis is in uh, Die Hard is in a Christmas movie. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, they say that nah, Bruce Willis is like, that, it's not a Christmas, a Christmas movie. movie. We don't know. Oh, well, I, I think I do. I, I argue more that that's a Christmas movie. But but um, you do have a couple of Christmas CDs also. I mean, so you do. You've done some Christmas shows, too. Are, do you, are you doing anything coming up? Do you have any um, plans? Um, so this year, everything went towards uh, One Dark Night. Plus, I was going to do I was going to do a Christmas show this year, but they would have put it on sale at the same time that they're selling dark night tickets. So I, I couldn't have two shows competing for, for ticket buyers. So I said, I'll put it off till next year or whatever. So, but it's, it's weird because normally in December we're rehearsing, playing, doing shows, yeah. doing live rehearsals, doing all the stuff. So now kind of, I'm like, man, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm bored. It's weird. It's I'm not doing anything in, in December. So, um, but yeah, it, it's a, it, that's a really, really good show too. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I, I like to stay busy. I don't know. I like to play. I like to write. I like to create things, you know. So what's going on with the writing? I mean, so last time you were on, I think one of your times, we obviously promote your, your your album, the last album you had on. For me, I write. Yep. And an awesome album and still plays in my car. My head, like all the time. And just everywhere else, but which what's what's next with you? How, what's your your album cycle? You thinking about the mention you're always writing? Are you? Yeah, you know it's it's strange because I I only write when it's time. So like I know there's which I think maybe might be an interesting thing as it is. So a lot a lot of people they write all the time and they they're always I don't like I write I write for a purpose. So like. All year was tweaking Dark Knight. Now I'll, I'll I'll do the tweaks for Dark Knight. Then I'll start to think about I'll start to think about the the next Neil record. And I know I'm I'm doing Europe this year, uh, April, mid April through end of May, and that's the best writing time for me is on the road. So you know, get to the room, check in. I got a few hours before sound check or after sound check. And I bring a, a a little mobile recording rig, yeah. and my head's in a great spot, right? You're, oh, yeah. you're on, and that's when the writing will happen for that. So that, that's interesting. So how often do you, you know? Because it got me thinking. You know, I'll add to this from what I've heard. How often do you play guitar throughout the year if you're not performing? How often do I play guitar? Yeah, you either pick it up, noodling, practice, whatever you call it. I'll, I'll do. I'll. Uh, I'll play just about every day. I'll play just about every day, but it's it's more utilitarian playing. Like so now, uh, I'm working on the tweaks for Dark Knight, as we were saying. Right. So I'm playing every day. I'm I'm recording. I'm doing my thing. Um, the guitar is always in my hand, but I can't say that I'm practicing or I'm. But it's 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 the work tool that I'm using. You know, so. But I'm always playing. But now, before I go out on tour, I do have to. I have to get straight, and I have to. I have to learn the tunes. I forget my songs Everyone instantly. Does. I mean, like I have to review. I'm all right. Like, what did I do? Like, it's out of my head. So, like on uh, the new stuff that we play live from Vermeer, it hasn't. I, 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 I'm starting to develop muscle memory, right? So yeah. we do uh, from Vermeer. We do big rock and we do saint valentine and then we do uh gumdrop and we do a few, a few stuff a few things off of that album so uh the first tour i had to learn it all tours over within a month i forgot it all so now i'm starting to develop some muscle memory but I, it's it's crazy how i but i've always been like that i i i got so much in my head that i i gotta get stuff out well, yeah. to bring stuff in. yeah is it getting harder though as you get older to do it, to remember and play the challenge? No, it, it, it's not. It's just, uh, I, I think I get more frustrated because I know a lot of guys have really great memories and they could play something that, you know, they, they wrote 20 years ago and like, Oh, that it's, uh, are you kidding me? You know? So now I have, uh, as I record, 
I have a, my iPad and uh, pencil and I, as I, rec- I, I, I tab it out, or if I have to work it out, I, I write it out. So now I have notes for all my tunes. So like the, the reinitiation process is so much faster now, but uh, it's crazy. I, it's how much I forget stuff, but I always uh, have. But it's not, but it's the funny thing is now, because I've talked to a lot of guitar players, your peers, <laughs> everybody has a different way of doing it. A lot of them come home from a tour and just put the guitar in the corner. And they will not pick it up until a week or two before they have to get ready to prep to rehearse. Right. And some of them are like, I don't even calluses anymore. Like something, I mean, or I forgot how to play. <laughs> like it's that bad. And some of them could just pick up, but some of them are just always playing all the time. Like it doesn't matter or they're always writing. You know, I've talked to people that play like, you know, every day, um, it was a guitar player, Tinsy Ellis, you know, a blues guy. Every day he writes one song in the morning before noon, like from eight to 12 is his time. He goes in the studio and he writes one song, puts it away. So he can use it, sell it, whatever. Now, of course, quality of songs, what's right, what's good, bad, it's always going to be an opinion. But so some people have a goal of writing one thing a day. Some people are like, I can't write, you know, maybe every couple of years I could squeeze something out. Right. But it's really weird to say, like, this is the time I'm going to do it. The only time I think somebody talked about being so precise was uh, Jethro Tull, Ian Anderson. He says, you know, I told so-and-so band record label that on, like, literally, like, like a January so-and-so at 10 a.m. in the morning, he like, had the date to the studio. I was going to be coming in. We were going to start recording. And he's like, you know, and he's dead serious. He's like, yeah, because I, I had emails and stuff put on that day, late, whatever. I didn't get into like 11 or 12. Like he was disappointed in himself, but he was off by an hour. It was precise to schedule to start writing the album. I'm like, you, you would probably be so tight. So everybody's got their own way. And and no artists, most artists can't read music or can't remember their stuff. A lot of them go on like ultimate guitar to relearn their stuff. Like, like it's just, it's not as magical. Like everybody just remembers it all the time. It's not like that, you know? And uh, I've even uh, for the, uh, the first version of one dark night, we did some crazy classical pieces that were like insane, insane. And and I've actually done just to remember, um, I've done my own, uh, get the phone out video, play it, play it slow. Maybe say, Hey, uh, here, you got to watch. Like I'm, I'm teaching myself because I know I'm going to come back to it. What the hell did I do there? And uh, That's smart. so, yeah, it's, I, I know my weakness and my weakness is I forget, I forget the stuff uh, fast. So um, yeah, but you know, it, it is, you, you mentioned about like, I'll say getting into a zone. So like when I start writing or I start recording something, I don't want to do anything else. Like this is, this is what I'm doing. This is my head's in this. I'm focused. I see the goal. I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a real shitty multitasker. I, I really, really am like, I'm either doing this or I'm doing this, but to split it 50, 50, it's, it's very difficult for me. Like I, my brain does not multitask. Well, I'm the worst really. So you know, but you can, but there's a skill though, but you can write songs when you're focused though. Some people cannot say, I'm going to sit you in a room with a guitar and a pen or whatever, a tambourine and a yeah. pen, a whistle, a kazoo, whatever. With voice memo. A voicemail. It could be Michael right. Monroe could have his, Michael Monroe could have his noise harmonica, his nose harmonica, I think he has. Uh, it was really funny. He played that one time. It was a funny show. <laughs> um, but, but like any instrument, and they, but they can't write. They're like, I can't write on command. I can't come with anything so if having that skill that you have it makes it easier for you just to say all right i can put this here you know which is like ian anderson he can sit down and schedule times to write music it's there on tap when he needs it but he right. needs to focus on it, uh, yeah, it's almost like you're a farmer you, you, you got all your crops are ready for you but you got to focus in and, and, and get it that's you exactly right. percent to do it and and uh, you know you could you you could write it's in when you when you come back to review something you've written it, it when you're writing it you're like man this is amazing this is this is the best thing i've ever written right but then you come back the next day or a week or whatever and they're like well maybe it's not as good as i thought it was you know so you really have to write more than you need because not everything you write is going to be great so or it's going to have longevity with you or like i i've for Vermeer, I, I I went down the road on a few tunes. Man, this is great. This is great. This is great. 
I've lost. I lost it. I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I've I lost the, the the path. Let's just put this aside, you know. So but here's the other thing that I've realized with writing is you gotta you gotta finish it right then. So if if I wrote like a verse and a chorus and all right, I'll come back to it, it, it never works out correctly. Like you have to you have to stamp the 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 basic idea front okay. to back and and then it's then it's you could you could produce it and tweak it from there but uh you know having a a riff hanging around and then you got to come back in a different state of mind maybe you don't hear it that way like you got to you got to strike while the iron's hot as they say and while well, you remember you know. the same exact way it's pretty funny cuz some people don't do it that way so it's really interesting you actually can just do it just like that you know do you have like you songs gotta, that you, you gotta put aside too. too do you I'm have sorry? like do you have songs put aside like do you get like blocked and be like you know what or i need more songs for the album let me review you visit my collection of riffs you know what i'm saying to kind of yeah. get me going again and then be like you know what i didn't need them i got new ideas i'll keep them again for the day <laughs> or use them they're yours it's interesting you say that because so before i got uh bogged down with dark knight this year I, I was writing earlier last year. So maybe January, February, March, I had, I like six tunes on, on the burner. Right. And I started thinking to myself, man, these are pretty good. I like, listen, maybe I don't need to put out a, a whole 10, 11, 12 song CD. I'll just do it like an EP thing, like six songs. Here it is. You know, I'll, I'll have a release this year. And then I, and then I, I looked away and and here we are in December. So um, it'll be interesting to go back and listen to those to see if I still like them or if that was just that time period. And, and I'll, we'll see, but it's interesting, you know. I think it, it well, yeah, I mean, it'll be the test. And I, but I think that I'm going to spot where I see economically a lot of bands, it's better for artists to do the smaller things or the waterfall releases, you know, when they stack them. So like every month, a new release comes out for an album. At the end of it, you have an album or whatever. But at a certain point, there's going to be no 10 songs. There are going to be 10 singles that aren't going to be saturated for, for an audience. So it's like, what does the audience want? An album, you know, a CD or a full thing? What's your audience listen to? I think with you, you have a more of a, of a focused audience that's going to sit down to listen to it because it's already instrumental and the, and the vocals are the harmony of your guitar. Right. It's more of a long form listen. I think a shorter form... You know, to me, to someone like me, I'd be like, oh, it's so frustrating because then I got to like load it up in a way to we hear it longer. I like to have a nice long play, especially, you know, on an instrumental because it already rocks. Right? Why change it? I mean, it's not. Right. I, I know that everyone says it's a it's a singles market now. And that, that may be that may be true. But I still maintain that people need. I see both sides, but I think people need to. T- turn their attention oh there's uh there's a, an event happening it's a new cd it's a new release it's a new thing whereas i i don't feel that excitement when people one off a single you know i i know everyone is into this content creating right so uh, i should i should release a tune every month because then it's consistent that's cool but i i, I question if people's attention is is it's going to get uh, the the due diligence that it needs because mm, it's just oh, it's a single. It's a single. It's a, versus here's the long form of everything. Now this is a this is a piece of work versus. Single, I agree, single, single. and I hope it changes because what's happening now. There are bands like you know, I was on the other day. And I'm like, oh wait, King Diamond, Jewish Priest, like all these bands released all these singles this like past month or whatever. I'm like, I didn't know because there's so much being released all the time. It used to be like an event. You're like, oh, this month it's going to be these guys. This month it's going to be these guys. I usually know what's going on more. It music and releases to me is becoming like what uh, what Twitter or X or whatever it is was is. It's like it's a bunch of people standing on boxes just yelling at the same time in a room. It's just right. so much noise. If everybody's releasing right. everything at the same time, you still can't consume it all. And I think content all the time is just bananas because no one's recharging their batteries. No one's getting to step back and get a break. No one's missing anybody. Right. And I say missing somebody, you want to miss an artist, a song, a movie. If you see a Star Wars 
five, every year is a new Star Wars. That can be exciting. But man, when we saw the first three Star Wars, you know what I mean? They're years apart and they're making it. You were, you were just chopping up the bit, you know? Yeah, you, you, you got to go away a little bit so people can miss you uh, a little right. bit. I th- for, I know yeah, the, for, the, for art and music and entertainment, for, I think so. The the philosophy, though, the opposite end of that is you got to stay in people's got to stay in people's uh, attention. It's I don't know. It, it's almost like I was talking to one of my friends about. He has a Patreon. Like he's like, I'm burned out. I'm burned out. I, I yeah. And, and the point being, how much content do people need? from an artist constantly like it's now it's not special anymore so i I, I, i'm speaking against the the stream of how things are done right now but i I don't i don't want to hear new kind like just non-stop from now now it's it's static at at a certain point i agree you know and and that's the thing you must get overly drunk from it or overly whatever overly you know, you're a kid drinking Coca-Cola all day long. By the end of the night, you're just blasting. You're like, out of control. And I know because I talk to people and you do get content. Content burnout is the worst because you're constantly trying to keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. And, and, you know, and in now my the end, level of quality has to come down. The level of quality has to come down, you know. Oh, well, I won't accept that. I'll just rather not sleep or, or have everything else fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> so unless we get real back because I won't let the quality go. But I think what happens is like, say, even for like a podcast, because they basically do a lot of them. I still haven't, I still don't have a fixed date when I release these. I do what I want. I can do a bunch at once or separate them. But with me, it depends on like releases and stuff. I like to have a set schedule and stuff because it does get a lot. But I'm more focusing on, on, on a lot more of the ones that are more special for me. And, you know, certain right. time periods for me. Like I'm not doing a lot. Like obviously us talking now is special for me. It's different. So to me, it's got to be a little bit different. I mean, an artist doing, you know, Patreon is good for an artist, but they can't do it every day. They can't be expected to do it maybe once a week, do a special update. They can do a couple of things because it can help supplement your income. I'm cool with that. But there's got to be a path that it's doable for an artist because what happens is they come out of the gate excited and then nothing. Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? That yeah, listen, I, I went through that, uh, what, two years ago. So I, I, I was... I was doing every Monday. I was releasing uh, a long. I remember form. texting about you're like you're like how about melodic Monday? We were like texting about melodic that. Monday, right? Right, exactly. And, and and listen, it it was I enjoyed it. It was great. I I needed to do something again, but so just talking about wearing wearing down the creative space, right? So for every long form video, I I had a a practice for it because it's a one shot, it's one take and I can't, I can't have mistakes. So I got to play it. I got to play it. Perfect. So I got to practice this thing for how many days, right? Because again, I got, it's my music. So I, I forgot it. You got to film it. You got to call it correct. You got to edit. You got to post. Now you have to interact and, and with, with everyone. And I'm not complaining about any of that. I mean, that it's, it's part of the job, right? No, but, no, but but by the end of the day, by the end of the, my whole week, was taken out by this process, right? So I'm gonna say, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know, but 20 hours, whatever it is. So now every week, 20 hours, 20 hours, 20, you know, I could be writing a brand new record or I could be do, doing something else. And you exactly watching like, a Netflix a Netflix special and relaxing also and not stressing uh, out. That, that's exactly right. So that's, that's why- That's help. So, so that's why- I stopped doing it, but listen, I do need to, I do need to, to do something on a, on a consistent basis. But, you know, I realize also, you know, my music, it's, um, it's not, it, it, it there's, it's not 10 second, 15 second bites of stuff, right? Like if I'm going to do a, a, a melody, a verse in one of my tunes, it's 45 seconds to let that melody develop, right? right? There, uh, it, It's, it, it's not fit for modern day consumption of 10 seconds, you know, and I don't want to go, here's the riff, here's the riff, here's the riff, you know, like it's, so I, I'm kind of struggling with what the next step is in terms of that, you know, could, listen, could I just get the phone out and do a little, I guess, I guess. I, you could do a teaching I, piece that isn't, you could do an, an informal version where it's not whatever, and just do a couple informal things of, you decide to play this riff, like teach a few riffs, 
once in a while, and then like, for a couple of weeks at a time or whatever for a special thing, but not make them long term. I just blast out a few. I mean, the record industry. But you know, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this because you you've got your you've got your thumb on the pulse of of players. I don't know. So, that. I got an opinion of everything now. <laughs> Good. And I want to know you, what your opinion is on this. So the interesting thing is now players, um, they're, they're not, and I could be wrong. They're not so concerned with their, their own music, their own writing, their own trajectory of, of their own creative process. Most guys I see it devolves very quickly into um, into lesson teaching stuff, which is fine, and gear reviews, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're, and and I I ask and with all sincereness, do you see Jimmy Page doing a, a gear review on a fucking amp or or, or a, a pedal or talk? Yeah, hey, um, hey, uh, this is Jimmy Page. Well, you know, they just sent me this uh, this tape measure, and uh, I, I re- it's really cool. It um it does like it, there's now we become we become but, schlepping salesmen. I, agree. I think yeah, I, I think we have. Well, first off, Jimmy Page, you can talk about what was it the uh, car commercial, the high end car that had rock and roll as a commercial, and they were never going to sell out. <laughs> so first off, it, it was they used rock and roll. And first off, if a band uses their song to make money, I don't think it's selling out. You wrote the damn song, you should cash in on it. Everybody else's. So to me, I don't think this thing is selling out. Good for you. Good for you, because you guys need more money in Led Zeppelin, because Peter Graham took it all. No, no I, I don't know. But the truth is, you know what I'm saying? Good for them. But the yeah. point is, they did it that time. And what and I, what I'm seeing, and this is just, once again, this is my opinion, and I haven't really thought much about it, because I've been doing this for a couple of years. A lot of artists, we talk about a lot of things, and a, a lot of behind the scenes I hear. And, and the feeling I get is, A, the musicians are trying to stay relevant because they want to keep up with it because that's the field. I don't think everyone, or they're overwhelmed, but they also don't feel like they know the technology that well. Also, really want to all know the technology that well, but they feel they have to. It's definitely taken away from their songwriting. I think they're missing just being regular dudes and dudettes, <laughs> dudas, you know what I'm saying? And I think the content thing is been crazy. When record companies came out and everybody had to do the record company dance, and what happened? It fell apart. So I don't think this is going to, I think everything is going to not going to be forever. So artists are dancing again, trying to keep up with a new thing again. Didn't we learn? They're trying to find where they, are, where they fit in with everything. But maybe that doesn't have, maybe the artists, and this could be for be everything in the future, maybe they can just make their own thing to fit in. Maybe that's what needs to be done. The model is there's different styles of releases. There's different types of music. There's different ways of doing it. Which it's like, what a la carte plan are you going to be to do your thing and not compete? They've been competing for years and years. And every time the record label had them chasing it against each other, you need to have bigger hair. You need to have a faster solo. If you had one ballad on this album, I love ballads. And if it was a good ballad, good for you too. Good for you. If you're making some bands do it, no, 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 no. Don't make ACDC do ballad. You didn't, you know what I'm saying? So I think if artists can be themselves and kind of do their own thing without this, Chasing this, it might be bumpy, but I, I, get, I think my point is there's a lot of commerce in it. So like too much, um, it's gonna blow they, up. Well, we we, we gotta. So so this is how it used to work for old dudes like me. So you would get an endorsement, right? And then the 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 company would would give you the legitimacy and the visibility that the record label should have right so if if uh like i got i got a rocktron endorsement or whatever back in the day now i'm in full page ads in guitar player magazines right so now all of a sudden now you're legitimate you got visibility you're, you're, you're so the 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 companies uh brought up the people and as they got bigger the visibility of the player got bigger and then the visibility visibility of the use of the gear got bigger and, and everyone rose together, right? The, the water line brought all the ships up as they say, but now it's interesting. No one's going to endorse you uh, unless you turn into the salesman. You're the salesman now. So we're going to give you this pedal, which is this tape measure, right? We're, we're going to give you 
this. We're going to give you this guitar foot stand right here. But now we need we need a video, uh, two videos a week. So now I'm a salesman. Now my job is not really playing. My job is to schlup your gear. And so you can use it as promote. I'm a salesman now. So that, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's the new way of doing things. And it it feels strange to me. That's all I'm saying. Well, most people don't think about it that way. Like, you know, you guys aren't salesmen. Like that foot pedal thing also at the miniature ironing board. So you got to think outside the box if you're really going <laughs> to be doing it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I, it's too much. And I agree with you. I think, and, and the technology side is the same thing for a lot of artists. They're like, I don't want to be on social media all the time. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be on social media all the time. It's a real battle with me because I don't promote the same. I'm not even endorsed. As we talked about this before, because would I be endorsed if I could do it in a way that was authentic? So if everybody's authentic out there. <laughs> but like, there it is. There, there, it is. I like, There's, there it is. I right. I will not put on somebody. I've shipped people on tail to my show that I support and have support me, but I do not do it in a way that um, – I would do anything for money, like numbers or this or that and promote this and, and hawk this. And, um, you know, I will have worn Dario's swag because they've given me stuff and that's what I use a lot, you know. So I will endorse what I use naturally, but, but I won't have somebody control me or say, you can put this on here. You can't control the show. I Somebody says, I like what you do. You just do it. Here you go. I, I think we can work good together. Right. That's natural. That's a natural, right, natural. thing. And I, and I haven't seen that. But I think with the guitar endorsements, it peaked. It peaked to a important point where it was so oversaturated. Yeah. You know, you got in the glory days of it. There's a certain point where guitars, how many, it's like a pages of endorsements and endorsements and endorsements. It doesn't really matter anymore. It's like, what team are you on? It always becomes like a sports team for gear for musicians. Well, it's like, it's, it's like a NASCAR, special. like right. a NASCAR driver. You're, you're on team Kiesel. Oh, you're a Kiesel guitar player or you're a Gibson guitar. No, I'm a guitar right. player. Like I use these guitars, but you know, they, it, it it's it's a defining thing like you're defined by the products you use but that that's not really the case right it's but like you but said it, it's, it's authentic and genuine then it's cool so well, like you you being a Kiesel guitar player there's like um talking to joey allen the other night uh warren uh gmp guitar guy his whole life his connection with the company and how he worked with him and his friend very authentic those are some of the best things a lot of guitar players are like that but it's even better with other companies that aren't just the Gibson. You've got the Gibson because Slash had, because Aerosmith had it, which is cool because there's a sound you like. But if I like a certain sound and I'm talking to somebody, I'll be like, I'm sure I've done to you. Hey, how do you get that tone? Like, you can you replicate sometimes because it's fun to know, but it's got to be authentic. And I think everyone's been chasing and chasing the music industry. I just got to be a certain point. Honestly, I don't think all these artists doing all this content on Patreon is, in the big end is going to make a big difference. I don't think every Patreon, unless it's helping you supplement you between tours, because some artists it does, can keep doing it. But if you're an artist, and, of course, and, and you, everyone has you, to do what they need to do. And and lessons is good. A lot. Of, I love that. I love that. Um, some people get a lesson from a certain their guitarist. You know what I mean? I'd probably do it if I thought I was good enough to even enter talking to somebody about it. But, but I think that in the long run, too much content becomes less magical. And Absolutely. what the new audience is going to be? I, what is, I don't. I don't know what the new rock world is going to be. Yet. It's still establishing because I know a lot of young artists are like, they have no album releases or no nothing, and they'll be like, "What are your, you know, what are your views? You know, they, they, well, they, they have a release. Thing. They have a release every day. Yeah. Here it is. They, they, they TikTok, release something every day. And, that, release. and they might get a lot of views. But what do a lot of views mean? Are you going to fill a club? I want to start seeing the numbers. When you can say, because I, I know some perfect people, this artist in the 80s and 90s had big hits, big platinum albums. Then they want a new representative in the past X amount of years recently. And they said, well, let me see your numbers. You need to have this many views on Instagram or whatever. Compared to somebody else who's never released an album, is in their bedroom right. singing songs, which they might be nice songs and stuff, but they're not road proven. They're not radio proven, like really. You know what I'm saying? That is That's bananas. Absolutely. That model can't last. It's not going to last because it's not Maybe in COVID when no one's touring and everything is virtual. But when people are back on the road again, so so you know her, remember her from the TikTok videos. You're like, no. Like I see a lot of people on TikTok. Yeah. Mostly animals farting is my favorite thing. I, I don't you know, like I'm not gonna remember that. So like what is you know what I mean? Or is it gonna be this guy who's sold arenas before? 
or play clubs. Yeah. To, to me, there's a certain exhibitional exhibitionism that like, like you, you, you have to have private moments in the creative process. Like it, it drives me crazy. Like, Hey, we're going to be on uh Twitch live writing the next record, you know, come join the writing process. Okay. So then the writing, Hey, what do you guys think of this? Uh, are you kidding me? Like, are that, you kidding? Like you're, you're, you're crowdfunding producing is what you're doing. Like, I haven't seen that yet. I like the videos, oh. like I, growing up, I like to see the videos afterwards and they had like the camp. Cause oh, I don't just go for production. So to me, it was like nerd stuff. But the camera was in there, and afterwards they edited it, so you saw the pro- part of the process, but you weren't in the decision. You were watching it afterwards, right? There was because, a camera rolling, right? Right, like, right. But you weren't. It wasn't directed. Show tonight is the writing process. Yeah, no. Like I think, I think it's it's too, it's just too, it's just too much. Like, can we have some private moments where we're like just creating and writing and and like th- that's it, it's it's an yeah. inner sanctum thing, right? So anyway, you know, I saw like an old man, kid, get off my lawn, get off my lawn right now. But listen, you always get to the bottom line of, of good stuff. We always get to good stuff for sure. So, well, I think this is, I do think, I, I think it's a good talk actually. It's probably a good topic to carry over to the year when you come back and, and more, is, you know, get the conversation going because are artists doing too much? Is it different to, to, your, to your career process? And to, what's special about it? Is it, Taking away from the, the the Big Bang when the release is out there, do the trickle and, numbers and so matter to the one day? My opinions are, are just that they're my opinions. So what what doesn't work for me might work for someone else, and uh, you know everyone has to do their own thing, and we all find our ways differently. And you know, so you know, uh, I can't. I'm not knocking anyone that that does all of that. It's just for me it, it, that doesn't work. You know, so I think there are different models though, but you know. Yeah. I want to thank you, man. You'll you'll be back again. We'll we've got more stuff. This has been awesome. Always thank good. You. And we're gonna we're gonna interview Jeff Lynn from ELO. Yes, that'll be great, right? That's the goal. Just read him. That is that is it. You're gone. <laughs>